Hi everyone, I am Zen Khan. Welcome back to another video in the series Robotics 101. In this video, we are going to talk about the velocities of robots. More specifically, the velocity of the end effector of a robot. And in doing so, we are also going to learn about the Jacobians and something called velocity ellipsoid. So here I have a fancy robot and I have to determine how fast the end effector of this robot can move. Now keeping in line with what we have been doing throughout this series, since we are dealing with 2D planar robots, so converting this to a 2D planar robot, we get something similar to this. So here we have a 2D planar version of this robot. It is a 3R robot since it has got three revolute joints here, here and the one here. So it has got three revolute joints. Now simplifying this problem further, so I simplify this problem further and I, I end up with this robot. So it, it is now a 2R robot, which has got one revolute joint here, which can rotate about this point and another revolute joint here. And at the end, I have gotten rid of the end effector. And so now what the question becomes is, what would be the velocity of the tip of the robot, which I have marked here. So I have to find out what the velocity is going to be of the tip of the robot. Now let me draw this robot again. So drawing this planar to our robot again, and I know that it has got two revenue joints, one here and the other one here. So it has got motors at these two joints. And now marking out the fixed frame. So this is my fixed frame right here. Theta one and theta two are my joint angles and A1 and A2 are my dick dance. And this cross represents the tip location of this robot with X and Y being the tip coordinate. So the way I proceed with this is I do the forward kinematics of this first. So I've got these three homogeneous transforms. I can call this as my H1 homogeneous transform, this as my H2, and this as my H3 homogeneous transform. Where I know that a1, A, this term right here is just this, which is cosine theta, sine theta, minus sine theta, and cosine theta. So this A of theta 1 is a 2 by 2 matrix, and A of theta 2 is a 2 by 2 matrix too. And if I multiply these three homogeneous transforms, I get this, where this again is a 2 by 2 matrix similar to this one. And these two terms that I get right here, if you remember that these two terms represent the displacement of the final frame. So this, what these two terms represents are the tip location. So this, these two terms represents the tip location with the first one being the top one being the X coordinate and the bottom one being the Y coordinate. If I go further, so I just, I'm just, examining the displacement term of this forward kinematics right here. So I have just extracted this, these two terms and written them in a slightly different form. So I've extracted A1 here, taken it out as common and here I've taken out A2. And I've written theta one two, which is the sum of theta one plus theta two. Now in order to find out the velocity, all I need to do is I need to differentiate this. So differentiating this, I get the tip linear velocity, which is just x dot and y dot. And if I do the differentiation, I end up with this. And just remember that theta one and theta two both are functions of time. So when I take out the derivative of theta one, I get theta one times theta one dot. So I end up with this. Now I just rewrite it another way as this. So what I've done is I have factored out theta one in this and made a bracket and kept everything to one side. And then I factored out theta two and I have made a bracket and multiplied everything that is being multiplied with theta two. So I've got these two big brackets. One is for theta one right here and the other one is for theta two. Now I, I'm going to rewrite it another way. 
just bear with me so again rewriting this so now i have rewritten this in another way what i have done is i have just extracted theta 1 and theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot in this way and i have made this a 2 by 2 matrix which is being multiplied with these and on the left hand side i have the tip linear velocities so just having a look at it i can see that this one right here is my end effector space which is just the velocity of the end effector so it is called the end effector space and this on the right this matrix which is theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot represents a joint space since these represent the join the and the th x dot and y dot represents the end effector this equation shows me this equation right here what just shows me that if you were to give me any joint angle velocity so if you were to give me like theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot i can simply multiply it with this 2 cross 2 matrix and i would get the tip velocity in this matrix right here which is the 2 cross 2 matrix you can see that this 2 cross 2 matrix is dependent on two things one is the link dense which if you already have a robot the link dents are going to be constant so a1 and a2 are just going to be constant and the other thing is it depends on the specific position of the robot at that particular instant of time so it depends on the value of theta 1 and theta 2 so if you were to change the configuration that is the position of a robot this matrix would change now there is a name given to this matrix and it is called the Jacobian so this matrix right here which in this case is a 2 cross 2 matrix is called the Jacobian of a robot and what it does is it just relates the joint space which is this one to the end effector space another way to say it is if I have the joint space here and I have the end space effector space here so the Jacobian maps the joint space to the end effector space so if you were to give me any value of theta 1 dot and theta 2 dot I am just going to multiply that value by the Jacobian and I would get the the x dot and y dot value so the velocities of the end effector so that is what the Jacobian does and if I just write this out compactly I get this equation right here which is a very important equation in robotics which is x dot equals to j times theta dot where x dot is a vector of my end effector velocity j is the jacobian and theta dot is a vector of my joint angles so let me just highlight this so this equation right here is a very important equation in robotics which just tells you that the Jacobian maps the joint space to the end effector space. So if you if you give me any values of the motor velocities, so motor angular velocities, I just multiply it by the Jacobian and I would get the end effector velocities. If you recall, this equation is kind of similar to the equation of the homogeneous transform. So in the homogeneous transform, we got this equation. So this equation is kind of similar to the homogeneous transform equation. Not exactly similar, but kind of similar. And one thing to note is that whenever you are making use of this equation right here, you have to always make use of the angular velocities in radians, never in degrees. So just, just make a mental note that you have to always make use of angular velocities in radians, never in degrees. And in the next video, we are going to have a look at what this equation right here means. We are going to dissect this equation and we are going to learn what velocity ellipsoids are. So see you in the next video.